Hi, Dora. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> Great. Now I can see you. Uh, today is with my phone. Oh, uh, yes, yes. it's better. <laughs> my, my computer is uh, slowing, so uh, slowing. It's very slow. It's very slow. Yeah, very slow. Mm, okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. Well, I can see you better and I can hear you better. We're good. Mm. We're good. David, good evening. Good evening. Okay. Let's just wait for the others. Enjoy your meal. I guess. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Ana Claudia. Good evening. Hello, good evening, teacher. How are you? Don't tell me you were stuck yesterday in the traffic jam. No, I'm not home. No, I was having issues with the internet because of the storm. Oh yeah. And um, yeah, my internet was failing all day, basically the whole mm -hmm. afternoon, and in the evening, and it was worse. Oh. My wife got stuck and on the traffic. It was wow, it's terrible. Two hours to make it home. Mm, wow. Yeah. A my sister. Uh, yeah, my sister took more than. Uh, she was stuck more than that because she was out of her job like around five p.m. and she works near to Price Mart in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. so she went there. Because she was waiting for her husband. Uh, it was like a point of meeting, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, what happened is that uh, he arrived late. Almost at the time, Price Mike was closing, almost closing. Then they were stuck in the in the loading part. And they arrived to their home like around uh, 11.30 p.m. Because they were stuck in the Olympica. Oh my God, it was an issue. <laughs> so they live uh, outside uh, San Salvador. They live in the highway near to Caballeria. So they, they were stuck. It was a, an issue yesterday. It was a nightmare. Exactly. And the storm, it was a heavy storm. It was a very heavy storm, that's true. Mm -hmm. But thanks God, we are here. One more day. Yep. And literally, it's one more day. We're going to have to work another day at the end of the module. Finish the model um, around July 5th, I think, or something. I don't know. Let me see. By the mm. way, where are the others? Everybody must be watching the 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 opening of the games, right? <laughs> yeah. Or maybe they are right there watching a live. <laughs> yeah, probably watching marshmallow. <laughs> My wife and kids are in the living room watching it. How do you? I guess everybody's looking at a friend of mine was giving away tickets, mm -hmm. but he 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 let everybody know, know uh, like 40 minutes before it started. Mm -hmm. It's just like an hour ago. He, he was texting on Facebook that uh, asking who wanted uh, free tickets, you know, I like, mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I think yeah. it's better to watch it in the TV. I think. I, I yeah, like, and the rain. The I don't rain. Like, yeah, I don't like crew. I don't like the crew people. So I... You don't like crowded places. Crowded, crowded places. That's, that's a good thing to say. Yeah, I don't like crowded places. If it's not uh, so important, so bye bye. I prefer. Well, yeah. Just, I, I would have gone with my daughter. Because she she likes marshmallow songs. Mm. 
Hmm. A few of them. Oh. Yeah, I mean, and she has never. I mean, they they have never been into a concert. Mm -hmm. I only That's went an experience, to experience. I know to be uh, alive in a concert. Exactly. Whatever. I have only gone to watch Arjona once. Mm. <laughs> in that stadium and it was amazing it was a nice concert mm. my brother-in-law had just left to the states wet mm. and and before the concert so when the, when he started singing that song in mojado my wife started crying you know and the part where it says si la luna you know it, mm. it was, i it, remember that song uh -huh. there was a full moon oh really yeah so it was like very really? special you know <laughs> mm. <laughs> it was good okay luis alberto steve rogers bonillo canales how are you i'm doing well yesterday was crazy with the storms it was uh, cows and, and chaos streets. chaos Chaos, 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 chaos. <laughs> on the streets. It's raining a lot. Yeah. Well, I I stayed at my my work almost midnight. <laughs> almost until what midnight. Time did you arrive? You say yes. Midnight. Yes. <laughs> yes. You see, teacher. My sister was like around 11 30 p.m. My God. It's too much. <laughs> it's just too much. I don't know. I have always thought that businesses should like uh, the center, you know, the center is everything is in San Salvador. Everything is in San Salvador. I, I, when I started working in call centers, that was the first thought I got. Uh, but I'm amused because. There's a lot of people working from home in Santa Ana, Sonsona, Tehuachapa, exactly. La Paz, San Miguel. I mean, and, and still we have this traffic. That's right. I don't understand it. I really don't get it, too. It's, it's really strange. Schools are closed. At least on that zone, you know, on the Salvador del Mundo, everything is closed, let's say, on government things and it will be uh, my kids are required to be on virtual classes from Monday until July 10th so it's like two oh, it's weeks and well what the traffic yes yeah yeah I mean for them it's, it's better because they can wake up Maybe later is not the, correct, the, the best way to learn but in this case anyway. I, I'm gonna have to be dealing with them you know because I wait I start my shift at five so I'm going to have to wake them up at about 6.30, I guess, mm -hmm. you know, so they can be ready for their classes at 8. It's going to be crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, guys. This, we're just six right now. Where are the others? I don't know. Okay. Keep going with the chip chat. <laughs> no, keep going with the chip chat. Chip chat. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I just was hearing that Steve after I got midnight. I was so surprised. Sorry, I, I didn't get that. What? I was so surprised that Steve uh, just arrived at his home at midnight. But yesterday was a crazy day. Yes, when when I when I go come back to my home, when uh, I came many, back home, came back home. Uh, there are many people go out from the stadium. Uh, this concert, I don't know what is the ocean, the artist ocean. I don't know. Right now, the event, uh, no, yesterday? No, no. yesterday, 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 yes. Uh, what was the concert? Uh, ocean, Danny Ocean, girl. Danny know. Ocean, uh, Ocean, yes, yes. Where, what stadium? Um, 
eh, con Montserrat. Eh, ah. Este. ¿Tuscatlán? <ríe> Tuscatlán, yes. Mm, ok, ok. Uh, I didn't hear about it. He only has one song, I think. I thought he, he only had one song. I don't know who's that person. <laughs> you don't know who's uh, Danny Ocean? I don't know who he is. He's a Colombian guy, right? How do you know? No, but I don't care. Yes, Baby, yes, no. Song, song, song of Friends. Well, I, I don't know, but Song of Friends well, well, today was talking about him. Mm. And and there and him his music and I, I don't like it. <laughs> no, Rebuso is is a nice has a nice rhythm. I have to listen to these songs because of my daughter, you know. But thank God she doesn't like Bad Bunny or Maluma mm. or Carol G. <laughs> oh my God! And I know their names because you know my coworkers on the call center are always talking. Oh my god, if I were to tell you what they talk about. <laughs> a man, a man texting on the chat. Gossip, gossip. Okay, okay. I got a ah. gossip for you guys. I got a gossip for you. I'm like, oh my god, a man doing that? No, no, no. Okay, let's do the attendance because it's 8.13 already and we're only seven. Where are the others? I don't know. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Thank you. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Dora Elizabeth Galdames Mont. Oh my God, wait. Dora Elizabeth Flores Méndez. Present. My dyslexia. <laughs> Fernando Mar Marvin González Martínez. Present. Excellent. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Maybe still in the state, right? Gracias, Elizabeth Díaz Vázquez. She said she was sick yesterday. Let's see tonight. Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Jarvin is here. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Brown Mejía. Wait a minute. Okay. Luis Albert Steve Bonilla Canales. Present teacher. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Wendy. She was there. I present teacher. So Thank you. My <laughs> Thank you. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Not here tonight. Okay. Well. It is what it is. So tonight, what did we talk about on the last class? Idioms. Oh, we did idioms right at the beginning of the class and then? Mm -hmm. And we talk about the, these uh, terms uh, like... Uh, uh, but what's the term is uh, um, the definition that we need to look into internet oh some definitions uh, that yes, we have to study yeah is, like uh, lounge value wait what is, what was it lounge exclusive market approach Yes, ecosystem yes, scale, scaling barriers yes. and sub subsidize subsidize god okay well tonight we have to talk about the re the relationship between the scaling and social impact um let's open the conversation really quick um and we're going to look into a grammar topic so uh firstly we have to define and understand your own concept of scaling, your own definition of the term scaling. What do you understand by scaling? And what do you understand by social impact? We have to brainstorm about it. I, I understand that. 
from the reading that uh, the day previous, the day after yesterday. Day. What is what is the yeah the day the day before yesterday. The day before yesterday. So the day after yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> That's a good one. It's now okay. Yeah, <laughs> it, it sound like a, a joke, but okay. I I learned that. Uh, there are some companies that are in the startup uh, uh, stage. Face, startup uh, stage. Stage, yes. And uh, when they uh, go over that stage, they are in the in the process of scaling. Mm -hmm. uh, go beyond that stage. I don't know how to say that. They grow out from that stage to another stage and. And that is the, the most difficult part. And the one of the lecture, one of the uh, excerpts, that, mm -hmm. yes, uh, says that the, the I don't I don't remember, but uh, ninety percent, ninety percent of the extra uh -huh. uh -huh. don't don't go over this stage. The to scale is. Beyond the startup's uh, condition. <laughs> you know, thinking about it, uh, uh, I have been developing an idea for 10 years. And it's a great idea. It's not lucrative. It is in the end. I, in the end, I mean, money comes in any forms nowadays for every business. It's not just the t the traditional way you started a business and then you start producing or manufacturing or or your or servicing whatever it is and then it goes growing you look for customers no right now if you create a business of any kind and you use social networks as your marketing strategy which is what everybody's doing then it's very easy to reach the audience. Very easy. Of course, you have to know a little bit about that. Uh, for example, let me give you a clear example. There is a song on my head because TikTok is, I don't know if you have heard about it. The song is like from six years ago. It's called like Makeba. Makeba. It's from South Africa. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it? Okay. Yeah, it's very it's very <laughs> sticky, you know. Sticky, and, yes. and, and... Bam, so I liked it. Bam, bam. <laughs> Guess what happened with the algorithm? The algorithm. Everybody's using that song in the background. Exactly. So automatically you get thousands of people watching your video. Same thing happens with marketing. You use the trendy videos on TikTok or whatever in any platform and you go viral. But the problem is that nobody knows how to go to the next level. I mean, these guys, these people throwing out videos, you know, every day, they may reach a high audience, but if you really want to reach millions, which is the goal in, on those social platforms, um, is very difficult. Um, in my project, my idea is um, is not like I mean it's so developed in my head <laughs> that I don't, I don't think I'm gonna go through through the first stages. And there's where I'm getting stuck because I don't want to leave the human side. Aside, <laughs> I don't want to leave the human side aside, you know, like it, it's important. It's important because even if I give something free and is oriented to people in poverty in El Salvador, um, even though it's still, you know, I will need people to work and go to these places. It's, it's a whole thing that I have in my head. But what I want to tell you is that that's the part that scares me just the way David is saying, you know, because as a millennial, and I think this is a sickness from us, from millennials, you want to be there. 
right away. Do you want to succeed fast? Now, is it possible to create a successful enterprise in a week or three months or six months? Is it possible? Do you think that it could happen if you create any, any sort of business? Could it be a success in six months? <laughs> Think about it. Have you heard of any company or a pupuseria, whatever kind of business that was able to succeed right away? I, I think that uh, you need to, to get some failures. Uh, uh, Woody Allen said that it, it took to me 20 years to be successful from overnight is the night, the night. overnight mm -hmm. uh, from the night to the morning. Mm -hmm. It took to me 20 years to be successful overnight. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some kind of preparation and you if you don't uh, give up and you learn, uh, every failure is a, a step, if it's a, and uh, you need to start learning. If you get easy success, maybe it's dangerous mm. because uh, you need the, the learning from failure. It's important. It's important, and uh, that uh, gives you uh, character, gives you consistency. Consistency. And obviously, <laughs> obviously. Uh, we were was looking uh, for or we were looking for success obviously nobody is looking for failure but uh, it is necessary in, in the world uh, some failures before success you succeed and, uh, yes. it, so again it is necessary to fail before succeeding it's yes. necessary to fail before succeeding necessary i like that thought i like that thought that sounded like uh, What's his name? Oh my God, Willie, Will, Will Smith. That sounded like Will, Will Smith. Will Smith had, was trying to become some sort of mentor, you know, a coach. He he was becoming that on social networks, but then the whole theater thing happened on on the Grammy Awards, I think, or what was it, the Oscars? I can't remember. Uh, the whole thing with his wife happened and. Everybody lost like trust on him, you know. I, I that's the way I, I noticed. So, is it possible? The, David says you need to fail. You need the experience. You need the silver hair, right? In order to to succeed, I agree with that. But I have seen I have seen a a, a very successful case. I already told you about it, but what I didn't tell you is that this guy succeeded in exactly what David said is dangerous. When you get to reach power so fast, it hits you. You are not mentally, emotionally, and physically prepared to receive that heat. Again, you're not mentally, emotionally, nor physically prepared to receive that heat. And what's the heat? What is the heat? The heat of power is getting friends with power, okay? Who will influence you to go on drugs, alcohol. What's the, what's the name of, on the, on the 60s, David? Drugs, sex, and rock and roll. That world is more dangerous than anything because your body is not prepared to handle an excess of alcohol, drugs, whatever. Your mentality is not prepared, especially if you reach success at a very uh, young age, you know, 
that that's dangerous. Just the way David said, this guy actually got reventated. Literally, he was totally reventated on the first year of his company succeeding. He was a fat guy, you know, all the time, looking like really big. And suddenly, thank God, he found illumination. Illumination in the way of books. Illumination in the way of mentors. Not religious mentors. He went out of El Salvador for a few months or for a month, I think. And in three, four months, he changed his physical aspect. He got underweight. He left any drugs or alcohol, doesn't drink. You know, it's crazy. I mean, you cannot drink Coca-Cola next to him. And as an employee, if you're drinking a Coke, you get fired. <laughs> like that, like that. But it's just a matter of mentality, just the way David said. You know, it's like experience. So, yes, you can succeed really quick. But what are the problems with scaling? And this is the next step. You may start with one branch and gain experience with it. But there, and this is very common, as David said, we all want to succeed, right? I mean, do you hear the noise? No, not at all. Okay. No. No. Sorry. Okay. I couldn't hear you. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so everybody wants to succeed, especially when you have a business. You don't want just one branch. You want it to become a national, uh, what? A national success? You know, you want your business to be in everybody's mouth. And then you want more. You want your business to be in a Central American market. Then in an American market. Then you want it to be in Europe. And then you reach the world. Another example will be Vicente Fernandez. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm watching the series. It's amazing. <laughs> and he tried. Well, I don't know if this is real life, you know, if it is based on, on true story. But he went to Europe. Well, first he went to Nicaragua and he was kidnapped by the president of Nicaragua. Uh, Spur the series. This was back in 1976. And then... He traveled to Europe and it was a failure as well. When he went back, came back from, from Europe to Mexico, he couldn't take his money out of the airport. So he had to buy a lot of things, jewelry and things to sell in Mexico. Can you believe it? So that's not how the real world works. That's not how the real world works. I challenge you to repeat that phrase. That's not how the real world works. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that was just a, a little intro to <laughs> our topic tonight. And let me present something really quick. It's a very short presentation. Where did I place it? I'm sorry. I misplaced it. So... <clears throat> What kind of fears? I'm gonna. I'm not gonna say barriers, but what kind of fears does a social entrepreneur face in nowadays world? What are the barriers? Uh, for me, those are fears, because if something I learned um, from books is that the fear is in your mind. Everything is in your mind. My dad used to tell me that, but I hated him when he used to tell me, it's all on your mind. And I just had hit my finger with a hammer or something, you know, and the, day, the, the pain is in your head. The pain is in your head. And I'm like, no, it's in my finger. <laughs> you know, come on, guys, laugh. Okay, so, <laughs> so I like to call it a mental barrier, you know, because in reality, your business is or has to be an extension of yourself. Okay? 
you feel it, you live, you bleed for it. It needs blood, okay, here's my blood. That's the way a real owner thinks. And if you are a good employee, <laughs> you're gonna laugh at, about this, but if you really want to grow in your company, think that the company is yours. Because if you think that the company is yours, what's going to happen? You're going to um, care about it. You're going to take care about it. Okay? So, scan and barriers for social enterprises. Social enterprises have the power to change the world for the better. However, I'm just going to read this one. Scaling can be a challenge. In this presentation, we'll explore the most common barriers and who, how to overcome them. Um, let's go with the first one, David. What is a social enterprise? Okay, I can activate my mind. Meaningful vision, social enterprises and businesses that prior, prioritize social or environmental impact over profit. Okay, repeat, prioritize. Prioritize, Priori social, priori prioritize, 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 prioritize. Mm -hmm. Okay. The second one, profit. Value, huh? Profit. Profit. Mm -hmm. profit. Yeah. What do you understand by this, David? Okay. The, you have a vision bigger than the, the, the profit in, in sale. You know, the, uh, a vision that the... Uh, Go beyond that only make earnings, but uh, to given the environment or given the the uh, all of the society and something more that only is the 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 business that the company is try, trying to do mm -hmm. a, a, a vision that have a special meaning not only for the company but uh, uh, for the people too perfect i like what you said at the beginning their visions um yeah. exceeds their personal profit their their gaining right it it goes exceed, beyond exceed, yeah, exceed yeah it goes beyond their, their vision of, about profit good okay i think we, we got it clear um uh, fernando would you like to read number two Sure, teacher. Value creation. They create value for society and their stakeholders uh, using innovative and su sustainable business models. Excellent. Repeat with me. Society. 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 Perfect. You got and it. In innovative is right. Wait, wait. Still not, not yet. Stakeholders. Stakeholders. Better. Stakeholders. Stakeholders. The K doesn't sound. I mean, you're not making the K sound. So, stakeholders. 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 Just practice that. In the mention, you you'll get it. And the last one, yes, innovative. I'm sorry, innovative. Innovative. Ah, oh, innovative. Isn't it innovative and sustainable business models? What do you understand by this, Fernando? Uh. I understand so, social enterprises are different. I dif are different for, to for, or from from uh, conventional enterprise. They care about society. 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 They uh -huh. care about society and and impact. Uh, impact environmental. Environmentally, like, 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 like number one say environmental impact over profit so they create and um, they create something value for 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 society <laughs> sorry for society and in using models that affect in a less way the, the mm -hmm. environment or the least or they, possible way on the least possible yeah, way and the less possible way or the search model that not affect the environment or they not affect uh, social or the people. 
Society. 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 So, so, Your so, crazy breeze. Sorry. So, sa. Society. 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 You, you may like that song. It's from, it's, I mean, Perlium. Perlium. That's my favorite band. Perlium. Um, that's the name of the song. Society. Society. Okay. They so? they even they even have a concert, a very small concert where Johnny Depp, you know who's that Johnny Depp, right? Right. Yeah, he, he played with uh, Eddie Vedder, the, the singer of the band. They play society together. I didn't know that Johnny Johnny Depp could play the guitar. It was really weird. So society. Society. Okay. Society, society. Okay. So give, that's give maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I, I'm very musical. Okay. Next, impact measurement. Impact measurement. Ana Claudia. Okay. Impact measurement. They measure their success by social and environmental outcomes as well as financial ones. How come? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm. Uh, <laughs> if they measure their success by social, yes, I believe impact and environment. Yeah, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Social mm -hmm. by social outcomes. What is a social outcome? Mm, environmental outcomes, it says. Uh -uh. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. But wait, let's break it down as you were doing. They measure their success by social outcomes and environmental outcomes. Mm -hmm. What, who could mention, everybody, everybody, who could mention a social outcome of a social enterprise? I'm sorry, a social entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. We have started this before, come on guys. What is a social outcome? Is something like the uh, selectors, super selectors, uh, give food to the kids, mm -hmm. kids uh, in a, I don't know how to say, but uh, the packaging kids or who the homeless pe people? No, there are special places, orphans, orphan. Uh, orphans. Uh, wait, I got a mental breakdown right now. Uh, homeless shelters. Open. Shelters. Shelters, yes, yes. Mm. Shelter. Selectors give food to hospice. Uh -huh. Any of these they are not shelters. a social enterprise. Uh, uh, yes. No, that's part of their SRAs, their social responsibility. SRPs, but, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Yes, they are a, a, an enterprise, but they have this part of uh, that they have the yeah that is why I, and i don't know but i don't know any social enterprise it's not mm, none of them i don't remember one let's say orphanage 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 to okay. orphanage i'm sure there was another way of saying this okay so they give food okay that's good that's but that they, is a, but they, they are not a social enterprise, right? No, they that's part of their social responsibility so, programs. I don't remember the name of a social enterprise here in the Sabado. Really? No, I don't know. What, what? Un techo para mi familia, mi Give me a, those are so are we talking about There's just NGOs, oh, right? NGO. NGO, I'm sorry. Uh -huh, NGO. That's an NGO. Okay, what about a social enterprise in so, NGO are or... considered like social enterprise? Uh they have the figure. They but have they a figure, but, um, as we study because no, correct. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the social enterprise is looking for a changes in the environmental, for example. But they the, do, and NGOs do have the capability, or they they work to change society. Most of them. Um, I don't know if they are considered. Are they considered, are they the social enterprise? Are we, we are studying? No, they follow, they pursued the mm -hmm. same, the same goal, let's say. I don't. 
that their foundation is not, they do not work as a social enterprise, right? There is, there is where the difference lays. The difference lays on how they are founded, mm -hmm. where they get the money from. Exactly. So, yeah, you're totally right. NGOs are non-government mm -hmm. organizations, uh, non-governmental -gov organizations, uh, but they are financed by the private sector, the private exactly. sector. So for that reason, I don't know. June, please give me a name. If, if okay. Is there a, a, a social enterprise in Salvador? I don't know. Now that David brought this up, of social uh, of super selectors giving out food there is, there are some organizations like um what's the call of that's the name of this this guys but uh but the chucho <laughs> but the chucho is a social organization a social okay. enterprise but, yeah, but that's a shelter for dogs oh. now something similar I don't remember the name, but many years ago, I helped them. Um, there are some organizations from churches, from churches, helping, um, giving food to homeless people or, take, yes. or taking them out of the street, which is impossible for some scenarios. There are adults on the street, homeless. They don't want to be rescued. You know, mm -hmm. it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. It is a reality. So these foundations work with no funds. And that's the difference exactly, Anna Claudia. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking, for example, sorry to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. If you put us an example, people who is in jail, but they are the, the ones that they want to, uh, how can I say, they, they want to change and they made a decision and they learn a new ability. Uh, they learn shoes, work with wood, uh, etc. So I think for me, I don't know if I'm getting grown, but the social enterprise will be, okay, what you uh, fabric or what you do, what you realize, you are going to sell it. I'm going to provide you with this space. I'm not going to charge you. But the earnings of this uh, will be to part for you, but the other party will be to purchase like, uh, I don't remember how to say Raw that. materials, raw materials. Raw materials, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that that would be the way that a social enterprise would work, that the foundation is in order to make a change in this case in people. And they are providing the tools to make them uh, succeed. So at the same time, they are preparing people in the real world how to handle the earnings or stuff like that. But the earnings, the revenue in this case, are going, uh, a part of those funds are going to purchase the, I don't know if that is the way how a social enterprise will work. But here in El Salvador, this figure as far as I understand, it's not working. That it's doesn't not exist. Exactly. There, doesn't are, exist. there are a, a medical institution or that is located in the uh, Antiguo Pucalán. They are uh, giving medical attention and uh, they... Uh, that could work as a social enterprise. Now, yes, what happens they, there? They, they are donating their time. The doctors are donating their time. That's the way I understand it works. You give your time to help someone else. I don't like the fact that they talk about earnings, you know, because in the end, as Claudia, Anna Claudia is saying, the earnings, the earnings are invested mm -hmm. right on the business again. So it's a cycle. It's a recycling cycle of money. <laughs> So I don't think we have this figure. Maybe it does exist in U.S. or other countries, but here is not implemented. It would be interesting to look for the Código de Comercio, all those things. I don't know. Uh, yeah. No, think about And you know what's, what's the matter here? Many Latin American countries don't, don't adapt 
this business model because it's very easy to be used on money laundry. Mm, that's right. That's okay? right. There's a yeah, lot of corruption. Right. There's a mm -hmm. lot of corruption. Now, keep that in, idea in mind. Uh, let's remember the Bank of India, right? The Indian Bank. <laughs> <laughs> the Bank Bangladesh, was it? I can't remember. But then, so we have Bangladesh. Bangladesh, right? Okay, so we have social outcome, now environmental outcomes, I think that's clear, right? What could be the environmental outcome? How do you measure environmental outcomes? Mm -hmm. As an example, I just come to my mind, I know it's not a social enterprise, but something me measurable could be what Walmart is making. For example, Doing. they no longer provide you with plastic bags for your purchases. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. make you to bring your bag. And it is being so hard in this country to change people's mind. Because in other countries you see on your backpack, you go to the supermarket and you just get in all what you purchase right there. Or you get paper bags. Exactly. It's a sin for you if you go to the supermarket without your bag. I remember once in Panama, I was looking for people like, what? Why don't you bring your bag? And is uh, in this country, it has been a um, long process, but people is now understanding. Now, I guess they can measure that change because they know how many bags they produce or sell in a year or in a month, in a week. So mm. they can make sure how many people is no longer using plastic bags. For example, me, uh, when I go to Selectos, they give me like around five or 10 plastic bags in just one day that I got to, to the supermarket. And if I just imagine visit the supermarket two or three times in a, a month, month just which is, a, which is a regular, Exactly. It will be 30 bucks in a month multiplied by 12 months. Okay. So that, they, that they, would be a major impact. But we're in El Salvador and we give them a second use to take the dog yeah, out. Yeah, but for they example. do not destroy these bags. Take around 15 or 20 years. The, the new ones, they are a okay. gift. Totally. Now, keeping the idea, Ana, Ana Claudia's idea, Steve, Fernando, Wendy, maybe, how could you transform Walmart's idea of removing bags, because they're selling bags, by the way, how could you transform this into a social and environmental positive outcome? Social and environmental positive, positive outcome. So they removed the bags. Mm -hmm. now, they're, now they are selling their own bags with the okay. Walmart logo. How can you transform that action to be a social social and environmental outcome? Stephen Fernando. Uh, Stephen uh, Fernando. Uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I know you're excited. Wait. <laughs> and you got it. I think you got the idea. Mm -hmm. it, it's complicated to measure that, teacher. So maybe no. one more time. Think, think. Now, social, Walmart social. What? Maybe Walmart has definite uh, uh, indicator for that, or I don't know how to measure. No, you, you, what will you do to transform this into a social and environmental outcome? To give it, to give it a social and environmental outcome. Okay, we don't have bags. That's a negative impact for the customers at the beginning. It was a negative impact. I hated it when I was going to Walmart. No bags. And then, oh, I forgot the bag. Uh, okay. Let's take everything on the cart and put it on the trunk. So how can you... Let, let me give you... The, let me tell you the, the idea that I have. To make it a social and environmental outcome, what I will do... Have you ever gone to the to the local market on Mercado? Yeah. And they sell some uh bolsa de saco. 
<laughs> some sack of eggs. Have you ever, do you have a sack of eggs in your house? Yes, to go shopping? Okay. What if they recycled the plastic? You know, plastics in general, bottles, they could recycle bottles and even have the opposite to vending machines. I think it's like cashing machines, it's cashing machines. You put the bottle, and this is very common in the States, you put the bottle on the machine and it gives you a penny or two or five, depending on the size, depending on the weight, I don't know. But they give you money in exchange of plastic bottles and aluminum cans. So Walmart could have a plant for recycling their bottles and from these bottles create bags from fiber, fiber, very resistant banks, indestructible bank banks. So that's a social and environmental outcome. Social because you're hiring people to do this process. You're creating jobs. You're you took my idea what I was about to, to say. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I, I was about to say that when you mute me. Ah. Oh, I didn't mute you. me. Come on. Hey, you know what? I watched, I am telling you this because I, I watched uh TikTok. This old man, there's an old man with um, a little engine, a 1.5 horsepower engine, the one that you use for your cisterna. So this guy, uh, it's a half 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 horse. I'm sorry, it's a half horse little engine. And he made it. He put something like a cacerola, you know, a pan on top of it. And he grabs up a, uh, a bottle, a Coke bottle, like the three liters bottle. And he puts it on top. And in 10 seconds, he pushes a bottom. And in 10 seconds, he creates fiber. Mm. Fiber, plastic fiber. It's amazing. I mean, in 10 seconds, it goes like a big sponge. So you can create this material. You can do thread out of it. So you see, you're very smart. You can create things with your mind. The difficult step is making them come true. And in this case, we'll be convincing Walmart of your idea, don't you think? Why don't we go all to Walmart and give them this idea, huh? <laughs> but first of all, we need to, how do you say when you need, when you make copyright your ideas because they will stall it and they will say, oh, we create this. That already happened to me. I mm -hmm. know. <laughs> don't, worry. don't worry. Like things happen in the nickel centers. <laughs> it happens. Exactly. Uh, like. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Forrest Gump. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. The smiley face and the in the saying, right? Shit happens. <laughs> okay. Why? Uh, well, let's go with the barriers. Don't lose the ideas that we're keeping on that we're figuring out during this class. Okay. So making bags, environmental bags for Walmart. Okay. What are the barriers? Francisco, welcome. Steve, go. Access to resources. Barriers. Maybe the the access to resources. Mm -hmm. Maybe resources. Um... Oh no! Read, please. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, okay, okay. Uh... Barriers. Access to resources. Many social enterprises. Lack access, lack access to the financial human, financial human, financial, and technological, financial mm -hmm. human, and technological resources. They need to scale their impact. They need to scale their impact. Hmm. Again, many social enterprises lack access to the financial, human, and technological resources. Resources. They need to scale their impact. In your own words, Steve. Okay. And there are a, a many social enterprises that don't they don't have access. Maybe they 
want to look for for money or technology, but maybe the technology is not our, our, in our country. Mm, and it is necessary to have money in order to buy from other country and use this kind of technology. Sometimes or improve. Maybe you have to 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 put uh, or, or copy ideas and to create if it is possible to create a that that this kind of technology in order to change or transformers or <laughs> transformers. <laughs> <laughs> to transformers no to transform transforms they say it's good <laughs> like have, you, have you watched the movie <laughs> no 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 I, they, they say it's I, got I that... good special effects <laughs> yes <laughs> come on we grew up we grew up with the gorilla you know and all these guys man okay hey I like that, that... <laughs> yes. I couldn't I couldn't figure out the last part to scale their impact. Uh, so a social enterprise needs financial, human, and technological resource to scale their impact. So moving on with the idea, if you have a social enterprise, it will only become famous and successful if you have impacted a lot of people. So if you are feeding homeless people, how many? Numbers. Numbers in society are critical. Statistics. Statistics are your uh, goal, you know, to show people, okay, we have helped. Do you think a successful social enterprise will be successful if you hear this? We have one year operating. We have been operating for a year and we have impacted a hundred homeless persons. Is that success? Yeah, it is need to measure. And it, well, I mean, whatever kind of, of business, you need a plan. You need a plan. Good. No, but yeah. I'm asking you, I mean, if you listen, if you hear this from uh, any social enterprise, we have impacted a hundred lives in a year. Yes. Mm, is that successful? Mm, no, no, no. Uh, All right. We, we need more, more impact, more people. To, you need to impact more people. That's the whole point. What do you think will be a good number, guys? Just figure it out. David, how many homeless guys will this organization need to help to be successful in a year. Well, there are here in, in Santa Tecla, uh, the, this place, Mama Margarita, that uh, they give food for about uh, uh, 200 every, every day, every morning. And uh, every afternoon, about 200, 200 people. And I think they are very successful. You know who was, who was Mama Margarita? Uh, I, I, <laughs> I hear something, but I don't have the, the full idea. No, I just Googled it. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm surprised. I'm Yeah. What? That was the the place where people went to get food, the homeless. But it was yes. founded by the the wife of Alfredo Cristiani. Okay, no, no, no. But I'm saying, I just googled it, Mama Margarita, and she was Don Bosco's mother. Uh... Yes, because it's the is a, a place from the the Catholic Church, mm. not not from Christianity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe maybe Christianity. Maybe they is... they found it right. Uh huh. They yes. gave money. Mm -hmm. yes. Of course, as we are studying, you need money to do this. 
a lot of money. How mm -hmm. many people? Like 500 a night? At, at least 200 because at least I, 200. I, I, sure. I, I, I see, I see. I, I, I see have it. seen, uh -huh. I have seen, but uh, I, I pay for, for, for that. Uh, it's place. a huge line, it's a huge line. Yes, yes. Mm. And uh, they, when sometimes they can give the, the people uh, clothes. Uh, and uh, another thing, but mostly is food. So 6,000 people a month. Now multiplied by 12, David? How many? 72,000 a year. <laughs> Holy yes. mother, 72,000 in average a year. That's successful. You know what? That sounds like a plan. Remember, you you need models, as, as Anna Claudia said. You need models. So if you're having, if you have an idea of a social enterprise, a good idea will be going to this place and see what they're doing, how they found, how they found their their business. You know. Wow, wow, that's a lot of people. Oh my god. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Let's move on. Um, Francisco, are you around? Can you read organizational culture? Organizational culture. We lost him. Okay, uh, Dora, would you please read organizational culture? Organizational, organizational or culture. The culture of many social enterprises is deeply rooted in their social mission, which can make growing more complex. Good. Again, culture. 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 There you go. Culture. Culture. There you go. Perfect. Culture club. Okay. Enterprises and deeply rooted. This is root. The base uh, of this word, this verb is root, right? Rooted, rooted. Fruder. Again, rooted. Fruder. Red, red. Fruder. <laughs> rooted. Fruder. <laughs> close, close. Rooted. Okay, in their social mission. 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 Mm, shin. Mission. Look at me. Mission. Mission. Shin. Mission. Vamos a decir shin. S-H-E-N. Mission. Mission. There you go. Repeat. Education. Education. Shin. Education. No shun. Vamos a decir S-H-E-N. Education. Education. Mm -mm. Shen. Education. 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 Ay, 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 ay. There you go. Education. Education. Better. Okay. Mission. 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 Shen. Punctuation. Punctuation. Shen. Punctuation. Uh, Shen. Punctuation. Okay. Enfoques en esto. Y la e, shen. Mission. Perfect. Decision. Decision. <laughs> Pero ese shh tiene que sonar shh porque si oye, se oye como ch. Se oye raro. Decision. Shen. Decision. What's your decision? I don't huh? know. <laughs> Come on, Dora, repeat. What's your decision? What? What? What's? What's your decision? Better. Okay. Uh, oh my God! Wait. Mm. Repeat. It's just an illusion. It's down the. <laughs> Come on, that's from our time. It's just an illusion. 
is just is just an illusion. Illusion. Everybody, everybody. <laughs> illusion. <laughs> Come on, I was listening to that song today. Illusion. Illusion. <laughs> there you go. It's practice, yeah. practice, practice. You see, there are many words. Uh, it's like that word social, social, social. Okay. So, so sure. And it's just a matter of repeating, repeating, repeating until you get it. Okay. Thank you, Dora. So the culture of many social enterprises is deeply rooted in their social mission, which can make growing more complex. In other words, if I have in my social enterprise only, listen to this, only people who has never experienced experience poverty what will happen if i only have people who was uh, raised with money you know they had money when they were kids they had nintendos four tvs cars and they want to start the social enterprise what will happen I'm gonna choose it's the same situation like you when you want. I was walking by the street with a friend of mine, mm -hmm. and we saw a, a man, alcoholic man, in the in the in the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Yes, in the side, sorry, sidewalk, yes, mm -hmm. in the sidewalk, and and we passed through them, but uh, my friend said to me, hey, 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 wait, 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 this, this man is going to die. If I don't give him uh, uh, alcohol, because they was alcoholic and they know the reaction. And when uh, they saw the symptoms, uh, they said, he said to me, he said to me, this man is going to die. He needs, because he was alcoholic and uh, and he recovered from them, but but from that man, he knows the symptoms. I I, I didn't know. I didn't, and I I, I don't have the comprehension that uh, to understand what is uh, happening. Uh, alcoholic man, but uh, he go through the, that situation and and he understand he what is happening. He understood what is happening, and he goes to 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 the drugstore and. Uh, or to the sons in the, the, the summer place where he can buy a, a, a beverage for that man and, and give him. And because he understood, he knows. Mm -hmm. And somebody who knows, somebody who have the experience can... He, uh, was he an alcoholic? Your friend was yes, an alcoholic yes, before? Yes, oh. he was an alcoholic and he understood, understood, understood. That, what is happening. But I, I didn't. Man. Because you have never drunk. Yes. I I I I think this is something in drunks, but mm -hmm. uh, he he has a different point of view. Of course. If you if so if you've never been on those shoes. Yes. That yes. that's hey, I remember the word panhandler. Panhandler. Pan handling, pan handling, and the other one is loitering. Hold on, loitering, loitering. Okay, loitering. You may find this if you ever go to the states or to uh, an English spoken country. You may see this sign that says "No loitering." Yes. Which is no vagabundiar, no araganiar. Okay, in that place, no panhandling. Which is do this, doing this. Putting your hand, you know, hey, come on, can you help help me? You know, that that's panhandler. It's a panhandler. Um, so I was about to ask you, David. So he called out to the man on the street. 
Do you what? Did he say, sir, can you help me? No, no, no. No. My God, no. you're singing again, Phil Collins. <laughs> Was it cold? Huh? And he knew where where to sleep? Is there someone you can tell me? <laughs> oh, think twice. It's just it's another, another day. day for you, you and, and me in paradise. paradise. Bye -bye. Phil Collins. Phil mm -hmm. Collins, come yeah. on. It's Friday, yeah. guys. <laughs> it's just <laughs> David's, story, David's story. David's story started like that. You know, once he was to the man on the street, and oh, I was like, oh, think <laughs> twice. And it's <laughs> true, you know. It's you know, another day you and me in paradise. Yeah. When I was at the I university, remember. David. Uh, one of her professors made us read a Salvadorian novel. It was called Miguel or something like that, but it was the story of a panhandler in El Salvador from the perspective of a panhandler. Like listening to his thoughts, you know, why are they ignoring me? Do I smell so bad? And it, <laughs> You know, it's so shocking, so moving to think that you ignore these people and they're humans. I mean, and that's really cruel. And something else, when I see all people, old men or old ladies on the street, I wonder, don't they have sons or daughters or family members? You know, it's really... You know, you, you can think a lot about it. What happened to this person? How come, how did she or he end up on the street? It's not normal, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but sometimes, teacher, I believe that, that their behaviors uh, with the family could, uh, could uh, cause will have those uh those what actions mm -hmm. no the the reactions mm -hmm. but you know the you you have the for each obstacle let me think that i don't remember how they every every action has one reaction excellent so, cause and effect uh -huh, cause and effect. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the reason that sometimes uh, they they have that that kind of life. But still, man, I mean, I'm talking about elderly, I elderly know, people I, I, on the street. Would you uh, let? Really would you let? Would you let your mother? Her. Would you let your mother go on the street? Yeah, of course. Uh, well, on the street, no. But I, I love my mother, but. You know, sometimes I believe that maybe it, they were so hard with it with their child. So that is the reason maybe those childs doesn't care. Those, those children. Uh -huh. I got your point. I got your point. Sounds cruel, but true. Yeah, that's really cruel. But you know, those times. So sad, but you true. Air, you, I believe that is air. You air what you. Mm, you get do you, you get, get what, what you deserve uh, yeah that's that's the reason you get what did you say mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. excellent okay hey welcome jose wilfredo thank you <laughs> okay so we keep going we were talking about how difficult it is to grow when there is a, a discrepancy of thinking you know and between the social mission and the experience of the people leading the the the, the social business, right? Uh, help me, Jose Wilfredo, go with market environment. Okay, that makes it clear. Um, I need to zoom. Just give me one moment. Market environment. The markets for social for social goods are often fragmented making it challenging for social enterprises to get the traction they traction. need. Traction? The traction they need. 
instruction they need. Mm -hmm. Now, in your own words, which is what we're doing. Everybody, think about your own words. How can you translate that? Mark environment. Enterprises. Yeah. Uh, maybe they they they, are, they don't have uh, the the how do you say that the subsidiaries or the dealers yeah. that they need, exactly. and there is a market in Santa Ana, and there is another market in San Miguel. It's difficult because it's not in, in at one point, and. Uh, they don't have all of the impulse or all of the selling that they can do because they don't have the opportunity or the resources to, to go to all this market in all of the country. Hmm. Something like that. Let's um, break this down. Let's break this down. When you in this context, a market is a place for selling, as David said, yes. right? It's a place for selling a market. Social goods are in this context products that we are selling on our social enterprise. Okay. In this market, being fragmented means that not everybody wants the product, right? I mean, there's a fragmented means that the thirty percent of the population is willing to buy social products, social goods, right? Another 20 is like thoughtful about it and the other 15 don't want to know anything about social products. They don't believe on those. Make sense? Fragmented is not that uh, there is a part here and the other part. Right, the but yes. The market. A split, like a split part? It's split it, right. Now, think about it. Why? Why am I telling you this? Because that's my experience as a customer. What do you prefer? Jabón de cuche or Protex? <laughs> or Protex? No, really. Jabón de cuche well, or those Protex? Time, in those times, or the spoon? Ah. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> in, in the time of the Jabón de cuche, the other one was the, 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 the life, not sorry, something, no. The, 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 the soap that is a. Uh, the, the people used to to give bus to the dogs a, a, a bigger a bigger <laughs> a bigger bow a big bow yes, but, but it's a <laughs> life life uh, life saver life so life saver is true oh my god yes. <laughs> I just got a oh my god a flashback was <laughs> Wilfredo, Steve, even Fernando is like, what the hell are they talking about? Right? Yeah, I don't think what what's, that? <laughs> what's that? <laughs> These guys are really old. <laughs> Man, lifesavers and the smell was something special, right? <laughs> yeah. But that's my point. You see my point? What do you prefer? Something produced in El Salvador in Chinameca or you know, something that comes from overseas through sheep, you know, it's more expensive, but it has chemicals that will hold my skin and, oh my God, right? We are used to this product. So that's fragmentation of the market when the market is not clear on the vision. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know if you got me. Now, yeah. now we get the point. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. The market itself is fragmented because it's having a different vision and and they are uh, uh, his own preference. Right, the market uh, doesn't like the product. It's not. Yes. yes. It's not so incrustated into the market. So that's why a social business doesn't have the traction they need. Who can help me here? What, what does that mean? What can a social enterprise do? to get traction, to get moving with the, their product. Think about it. You produce uh, wallets, you produce belts for men, everything that is related to leather. You know leather, right? Oh, right? <laughs> right?
right? So you produce you products with made of leather, which is very common in El Salvador. They are very beautiful. You know, they have the logo of El Salvador, very few beautiful drawings. You know what I'm talking about. Most likely you have at least, <laughs> at least you have an emergency box on your bathroom. If you're Salvadorian, you have an emergency box on your bathroom with uh, a piece of rock. What, what was it? <laughs> <A masorca. laughs> you know what, I'm know talking what you're about. talking about. That's okay. a, mm -hmm. uh, what is the name of that? Uh, an emergency box. Yeah, emergency box. <laughs> yeah, I know. I saw those in the story. Do you know where they sell them? In El Parque de la Familia. Uh, even in El the ex quartel mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they sell it yeah, in so, case of I emergency know. break emergency the glass box. and you, you decide <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. that's so hilarious so what do you do to move this product if the society i mean the market is not convinced you know and most of all now if you watch the uh, first part of the opening of the games, have you watched the opening? The dancing part and everything, no? Before the class? Yes. Did you notice something? Did you like it? Did you, uh, feel, did you feel identified as Salvadorian with this dance? What happened is that they explained uh, after that that they were expressing the feelings written. Those were a uh, now what words? Hmm? Those what, about, were... what about the outfit? The what? The outfit. The outfit. Oh, the outfit. The outfit. Oh, it, that is what they explained. Uh, the mm -hmm. kids, they explained later that they were dancing, expressing feelings, joy, uh, sports. They were explaining after that. Yeah, the outfit was for dancing not some something cultural maybe okay mm -hmm. i just want to make a point here if we are losing our culture or you know this these things these dressings and everything are part of our culture whether we like it or not but in the end we're losing them and the next generation will not agree with these traditions I saw it like expressions because they are dancers and as a dance artist, they, they expressing with everything, also with the outfit. Right. I love, I love what they are doing with this government, I have to say. Uh, but I don't know, when I saw that, I was like, wait, where is the total goals? You know, the the the, the whole thing, the outfit, you know, that is traditional the from flor the, sorte. <laughs> the flor de sort and everything. What we what we are accustomed to, right? And it made me think because my kid, my 13 year old said exactly what Anna Claudia is saying. No, that is just a more innovative way because they introduced artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence. Yes. And, and you know what I love the most? They mm -hmm. were explaining in uh, common words what in, uh, artificial intelligence is. They were educating people. That is what I learned. And, and also Perfect. with and the I did, graphics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally, <laughs> totally. So going back to the point, if we lose our cultural roots, the market will be more fragmented. And sooner than later, a 1% of the population will be in favor of traditional artifacts. Okay? They will be in museums. Okay? <laughs> no, really. My wife has a one of these uh, melding... Uh, rocks, you know, the old ones. Oh, some circle ones from aluminum? No, no, no. Made of rock, stones. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, I got Piedra one. De uh -huh. I got one here at home. <laughs> and I told you her, know, you, you know what? They, they, make it from, they are not making it from stone. They are making it Those from... are volcano stone, I, I believe. The yes, original ones? The yes. real ones, the original ones. But nowadays, mm -hmm. there are people making them from how... Cemento? I don't know. From cement. From cement. Cement. Oh. cement. Yes. Yeah. 
It's so it's funny. True. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, never mind. That that's going on another way. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know I what? love creativity. The people are really creative. Right there with the coin. Do you know what? Yeah, that's what I heard. But I, I, what, I saw an, a very old, I saw a very old movie where La India is milling the grains, ah, and, she, and she's wearing a, how do you call a camisón, right? And, and El Indio comes to the house, and he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I always play with my wife that way, you know. Oh my God, are you gonna mill the corn? <laughs> it's so funny. That's our culture, you know, things that we grew up with. Okay, so we got that part. Uh, fractionated, a fragmented market, splitting on the decision of buying those things or not. Okay, systemic barriers. Lastly, the border systematic, systemic issues such as unequal policies, low consumer awareness, can act as barriers to the growth of social enterprises. It's very similar to the previous one. Mm -hmm. If you have an unfair market. So think about it as you are selling um, traditional artifacts, okay? That you made with your own hands from your own money because you want to help someone or a group of people with these products that you're producing, okay? But not only you're facing as a, a fragmented market who doesn't want to know about your product. So you go to a semaphore, to a light, okay? You stand there selling your products. And on top of that, El Cam, right? Comes and tell you, hey, why are, why are you selling here? You have to pay taxes for selling. Taxes. For selling those things on the light. And you go like, hey, but this is just a social entrepreneurship to help a community. And that's, what these systemic barriers talk about. You know, the broader, it really extends systemic issues such as unequal policies. They try to apply the policies they have for big companies with social entrepreneurs, with people selling on the street, and so on. Low consumer awareness. So again, people is not aware that those artifacts, those products exist. And that makes a problem for growing. I'm going to move on. This I just spent too long on this one. Okay. Uh, if, do you like the topic? Or, or are you getting born, bored? No. Okay. Good. No. <laughs> good. I'm gonna move through this really quick. Revenue stream. Social enterprises often struggle with generating consistent and diversified revenue streams that allow them to survive and grow. Let me give you a clear example with all my all my heart. My father um, became a father for the third time eight years ago. And he's like 68 now. He's a, yeah, he's like 68 or something. So my brother was born eight years ago. Three, four years later, my sister came to life. So he became father for a fourth time at the age of 60 something. The thing is that he had the idea of becoming an interpreter and now he is selling tortillas near to Estadio. Oh my God, what is it? Oscar Quiteño in Santa Ana. You may know oh, him. Oh I huh? saw him today. Don no. Payo. <laughs> I, I saw I know is this a man with an out of service for tortillas? No. What? I saw a man today. He's selling... very close to, to La Despensa, going exactly. to the stadium. He's always the, there. You I saw a man and I always I mark him. He's uh yeah, he's like a mm -hmm. six year something like that. Yeah, but white white with, hair. Exactly. But mm -hmm. he's a very elegant man. With uh, uh, Gelera, I don't know how to say yes. this. Yes, yeah. Uh -huh. but he had, uh, and he sell, he sell a lot. And I was, my goodness, what a good idea. Because it's an auto service for tortillas. So people in the car just stop you right just there. And do the sign, it. you know, like one or two or three dollars. Exactly. <laughs> he already has the magazine. 
my is he your dad yeah that's my dad congratulations you have a very <laughs> smart father i mean but you have no idea i mean the struggle that he went through to get there and necessity you know i love him, to see him, him believe me today i saw him oh i didn't know i know he was on the news and on facebook and everything he he really struggled no, i haven't to... seen it before i just because i Come saw on. him person right and, and I said, my goodness he, I, it's, I it's, a, it's a very good product you know because oh, really? he has a secret i don't know how he does but the tortillas are really white Oh. They're made out of pure corn, right? I mean, who made the tortillas? Don't tell me your father. No, his wife. Ah, oh, okay. His wife, yeah. yeah, yeah. Who makes who made the tortillas? Uh, the, my father's wife. <laughs> my mother-in-law, I guess. Next time, I'm going to purchase. I guess but, but next Friday. She's younger than me, so I don't know what to call her. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the point, you know. Well, so, be jealous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's the point. Now, here's the deal with this topic. Revenue streams. He struggles to get like a line of income, you know, because I help him financially, like to study He's the situation in, in some way, like to try to understand what he's doing to start the business. We had an idea of selling color tortillas. It was his idea, you know, but I was like, I don't think, People is gonna buy green tortillas or red tortillas. <laughs> like, how did you make them, right? <laughs> so, like, I don't know. It was fun, a fun idea, but it was a good idea. It was a good idea. The thing is that he just reached that level of having a continuous line of income. It's like telling you that every day he earns forty dollars, and that's the bottom line. So he knows that for sure he's going to sell $40 every day, every day, every day. So that's what this point refers to. You have to uh, reach that level. It's a revenue stream that allowed you to survive, not to grow, not to grow. I, this, I don't agree with this because you need to survive every day. If you want to grow, what do you have to do in this revenue stream? Um, you have various options, but one of them will be if your net income, your real income is $40 a day on revenue, then you save 20. You think, as Ana Claudia mentioned this before, so I, I made the idea that I only earn 20 and I'm going to save the other 20 for the future. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. my father, my father is doing that. He's, he's saving. He already bought um, a mill for the house. He has his own machinery and everything in the house. So he does the whole process because he's too old, you know, he doesn't, I didn't like him to go all the way and mill the corn at 5 a.m. in the morning and then come back to the house. Man, that was too much. But I think that process gives, gives him life. He, he makes a life, I guess. He makes because a living. He's a very happy man selling there. He's very, I like the fact that he's always smelling good, you know, very formal, not not so formal, right? But he, well, he's presentation. Elegant. Yeah. Good and, presentation. Gives, and gives the confidence for you to go, oh, this man is clean. And yes. you want to purchase. Uh-huh. Yeah. That is the image he, he has. He's, uh, he's always smiling, you know, that's part of our family. Okay. So I I've, didn't notice the first point was the lack of capital. How do you start a business without money? And there are many TikToks about this. I don't believe them. I don't trust them because in reality, you do need at least a starting amount. You know, it's impossible to start without any funds. Um, the only way is finding um, someone who can support you or entities to support you and give you the starting, um, mm -hmm. the starting money. Um, then let's think about impact reporting investors may want to see more accurate and measurable impact metrics when you have someone investing on your idea or on your um, entrepreneurship and when it comes to a social impact enterprise i believe it's not easy it's not easy because as i mentioned before what's the outcome of a social enterprise how many heads have you count Teacher, um, in, in these companies, uh, I think that is commonly 
you can find venture investors. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the, mm -hmm, venture investor. It's just, you know what happened to my father, by the way? Mm -hmm. Moving on with this idea. Huh? Because my, my grandma actually was the one that historically sold tortillas in the house. Okay. On a very old, uh, how do you say, planche in English. Oh, my God. It was a very old model. <laughs> my grandfather built it in the house. The thing is that uh, he had the idea of going with the coolers to that corner specifically. He always thought about that corner to be the place. Right, mm -hmm. the right spot, he said, and he was right. So he didn't have the funds, but he somehow he started praying and everything, and somehow his childhood friends, his childhood friends who migrated to the states and others, you know, went well in their lives, started helping him. So that's the way he got he got the first part. I helped him a little bit, but he like got a kind little... of donations because you are not expecting a return. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was purely donations, you name it. Mm -hmm. And he went on Facebook. He was on Cuatro Vision, I think, on Tenotisa 21. He made it loud. He was on the news, <laughs> on the newspaper too. And, and I didn't uh hear about him until someone was like hey is this your father and i was like yeah cool <laughs> you know i was very proud of him recently i went there and because i had like six months without seeing him and he was very i i i just stopped you know hey give me a dollar <laughs> and he was like yeah right now <laughs> was... <laughs> <laughs> he started laughing and crying oh my god it was you. It was so funny. And I'm just like him, physically. Anyways, so thank God he doesn't have no one. Well, he has his own, and, and I taught him this. He was neglecting to keep a notebook for the accounting. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to do it. He wouldn't, didn't want to see numbers, you know, or anything. And I forced him, hey. If you're investing on this, you better do the math every single day. I do it in my mind, and I don't know. He's very stubborn like me. He's very stubborn. And I tell him, you know what? Do the math every day. You'll see. You'll see. And now that he has two kids, you know, he's doing it every day, every day, every day. And he's very happy of doing that. Now, collaborative founding, new and innovative funding instruments such as social impact bonds, can help increase capital availability. Now, in a small business, uh, in a very small business, and or entrepreneurship, growing doesn't sound like a plan. When you succeed on, a, on an entrepreneurship, growing is not a, the first idea that you get. It's okay that you want to secure your money. Don't you feel like, picture this, you're making $5,000 a month, from your entrepreneurship, you already made it, you feel successful, and more people start asking you, you know, like, why don't you grow? Is there another branch of your business in Santa Ana or Sonsonate? I mean, why why don't you grow, right? So there's where the hard decision comes. And you become at risk of being exposed on to bad hands, let's say. Let's say you can get a bad hand finding uh, people to help you, like bonds, as it states. A bank could take your business, and that's really sad. As you heard from your co from your classmate Frank, right? No, what? Who was it, Miguel? No, I, I forgot his name. I'm sorry. Yeah, Juan Miguel. Right, his story. I mean, wow. It's so, so difficult and so easy to be there. Anyways, I think that's it. And this is a separate topic, but marketing and branding challenges. When you come up with a product, it's so funny. But I can't even remember the name he, he put on the, into this entrepreneurship he had. First, he thought about Pio Sortilas because everybody knows my father in Santa Ana. It's like, 
I mean, in El Palmar, in El Palmar. Everybody knows Payo, I mean, Payo, Payo. And it's, he became famous because my father is a survivor of uh, drug addiction. You know, he was like 30 years on drugs. And suddenly um, we went to Crea and he got recovered. But the, the impressive part of this is that Facundo Cabral came to El Salvador and he went to, to Crea to see the interns. And out of the thousand pictures they took, the picture that went on the newspaper was my dad hugging Facundo Cabral. What, what? Oh, Alberto Cortez, I can't remember. Lo Cabral, no quita lo Alberto Cortez. Cortez. Yeah, it was Cortez. So my dad was on the on the newspaper on the first page, you know. Everybody was like, what? This guy went out of drugs. I can do it. You know, like that. So it was he was used, I tell him. God use you, you know, for a purpose. Now take advantage of it. And he did. And he did. And so marketing, he just thought about a, a banner. I don't know if you saw it. It's a big banner. I can remember if it says Chilas Tortillas. Or Chilas yeah, tortillas. yeah. That is why I, I admire him because it's so creative. The way he's always, he... he's always like thinking, how else can I, what else can I do? I use, he, he told he explains me things that he's thinking about using a bag, for example, because he hates when somebody sells tortillas and they go with, he goes like, how many do you want? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with their own hands, right? Okay, he's very clean in that aspect. Okay, advertising. If let's say that my dad was doing that for a social, well, he's doing it basically to survive. But you know, if he was doing it for a different cause to try to support another entity or or a group of people, uh, let's see, communicating the impact of social enterprises can difficult can be difficult without appearing heavy-handed or peachy what does that mean heavy-handed or peachy when you see someone asking for money to help others what's the first thought that you come across steve your microphone <laughs> no uh, um... Well, again, again, um, when you see someone comes to you and, hey, you know what? Would you support this cause? Give me 10, 20 bucks, whatever you can. You know, we're helping this community in Zacatecoluca to uh, get their their life going, you know. Will you help me? What comes to your mind? Maybe that person can use the money for other reason. The purpose. How can no I problem. prove? Yes. That's what it means. Heavy handed. You want too much. You're asking for too much for your cause. Preachy? Preachy. Preach. Preach. When you resell your idea. Let me give you a clear example, which is related to preachy. Uh, really quick, uh, tengo un señor que viene a pedir siempre, una vez al mes acá a la casa, y siempre es como, no tiene algo que le sobre, algo eléctrico, una almohada, lo que sea, un sofá, yo, no, ya le di todo lo que tenía, seguro, y hasta mete la cabeza a la casa, seguro, no, man, seguro que ahí tiene algún teléfono, cualquier cosa, una licuadora que no sirva, man, it takes like 15 minutes to tell him no. <laughs> But I always do that with a smile. I try to give him something. Whenever I have something that I know it's going to be for him, I just put it apart on the garage and I wait for him. And he shows up and I give it to him. That's the way. I mean, but man, he insists so much. They insist. That's the word. Has that happened to you? Come on, you have money, man. Look at you. You're driving a car. I mean, <laughs> like, this guy has no clue, right? That's what it means. Heavy handed or preachy. Think about those terms. Okay. 
Now, social media strategies. You could think that it's very easy to sell the idea just by showing the people that you're helping. But sometimes it could be not so producing. How can I say contraproducente in English? Somebody look at the term. Contraproducente. Not beneficial. I don't know. But it, it may not look good. Okay. It may be, it may look too overwhelmed or unreal, fake, if you want to call it that way. So what is it? Contraproducente. Self-deferring. Self? Self-deferring? Self-deferring. Self Deferring. Mm -hmm. Put it on the chat, self-deferring. Okay, self-deferring. Good. So, a good picture. I don't know. It's better a video, something um, explaining the situations. That helped National Geographic. That helped Discovery Channel under, under incursions on Africa, helping people. Do you like those documentaries when they go and help someone? Some communities? That's better, right? Is more explained yeah. and everything. Okay, customer engagement. Many social enterprises find it hard to communicate their value proposition to their target population. When you try to help someone, and this is real, and I, well, I'm not gonna say that. Anyways, when you try to help someone, picture this, you are, just think about this, you are homeless you know, on the street. You have no one, nobody. And the only thing that you have with you is a sack full of plastics, uh, aluminum cans that you're going to sell tomorrow to, to have something to eat. Picture this. You are sleeping on a piece of carton with, you know, okay? And there you are on a carton board, you're sleeping. And you hear that someone is approaching, but this person is trying to give you an envelope with money, but he's afraid of you because you're all dirty, you know, you smell really bad and you're slept on the sidewalk. So the first thought that you get is to cover your belongings, right? They come to steal my things. You got the idea? That's all you have. So when you try to help someone, be careful. That person may be thinking that you're trying to steal the little they have. It makes sense, right? Yes. <laughs> it's really hard, <laughs> but that, that's what it talks about. When my uncle used to go to San Zacatecoluca, as I told you before, to, to teach these people how to how to manage the, the hen farms. Mm -hmm. They were another term, incredulo. I know it, but I want you to look for it. How do you say incredulo in English? You should know up at this point. Come on. That's your president. Okay. Oh no, in English, how do you say incredulo? No believer. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> Incredulous. Really? You didn't find the name of your president or president? Incredulous. Incredulous. Unbelievably. Unbelieving. Unbelieving. Oh, okay. It's not a synonym for it. Ingenuo. Okay. Naive. I was looking for that word for you to find that word. Oh, N A I V? E. Okay. I yeah. saw it. Uh huh. <laughs> so, but I thought that was used for things made, general. handmade, huh? When you ignore some something, uh, okay. when you ignore something, yeah. Okay. okay. So that was the people's faces, you know, when when my uncle used to try to help them, explain them how to manage their hands. They were there just for the money. That's in reality. That that's what it is. Um, those communities are 
or were used to receive the help, the donations from international communities to help them raise hands and eggs, you know, and sell them. That's local development, um, social local development. That's a different topic, Topic, but it works, goes on projects, you know, it's bigger. It's very similar and, and it's impressive. Sometimes people among themselves, you know, when you're poor, you have others that try to steal what you don't have. It's very, it's an irony, but it is what it is. So lastly, uh, sky, scaling through collaboration. Who can help me reading? Who wants to continue reading? Let's finish mm -hmm. this presentation. Me. Mm -hmm. Scaling through collaborations, cross-sector partnerships. Social enterprises can partner with private and public and Entities. 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 Mm -hmm. G I I N G O S and academic institutions to leverage their expertise, expertise, expertise. and networks. Expertise and networks. Good NGOs and academic institutions to leverage leverage their expertise and networks. So, in other words, you can get counselor, counselorship, what is it? Counseling, I'm sorry. You can get counselor or advice from universities. For example, La Tecnológica is always like, they have a department, I think, that helps you to develop an idea. Of course, my recommendation is always be careful. There's a lot of people taking advantage of your ideas, you know, whoever. If you get close to them you know and it's like ah, this this is they're gonna go like no it's not a good idea ah that doesn't sound like a plan and they will take your idea and go and do it so that's every day okay who's next joint ventures me teacher go ahead Turn. joint ventures Partnering with other social enterprises with compatible goals and complementary skills can help both entities grow more rapidly. Hmm. Oh, whoa, whoa. This is easy. You may have seen it on social network. And TikTok is becoming a trend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. What is it? Joint ventures. What do you understand by partnering with other social enterprises? Oh, sorry. Uh, partnering with other social enterprises. Uh, you can you can make a, 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 a so, sociedad, pero no de sociedad, personas, sociedad de empresas. Right, right. A society. The same a society. thing. Same uh -huh. thing. Oh, okay. A partnership. Uh, okay. And you can make a society with other, other, um, other enterprises, but other social enterprises because you know you try to do something for people. So, look at that. It's just compatible goals. I was doing the figure of this woman. I'm not gonna say names, but this woman on downtown San Salvador dancing. Right? She became so popular. Right? You know who I'm talking about. So. The trend on TikTok uh, is, as yeah. a, you know what I'm talking about, right? A video, uh, a YouTuber becoming uh, or doing a live streaming with another Salvadorian YouTuber. And they go like, yeah, we're here. And just to challenge each other and gain some money. I heard that works. I don't know, but I will never do that. I don't know. It doesn't sound like a plan for me. Anyways me criticizing oh my god okay that's important compatible goals you cannot uh, partnership with another social enterprise if you don't share the same vision on both both and lastly licensing uh who jose wilfredo no yeah licensing well did you i was reading the the text I was reading the John then. Oh, really? No, it was Fernando. I don't know. Uh, uh, well, uh, I was reading right now. I don't hear you. 
if you were asking me something. No, no, no. Licensing. Can you read it? Oh, yeah, sure. Licensing, the licensing of products and services can generate revenue for social enterprises while expanding their brand into the new territories. Territories, yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you. Wait, can somebody help me think about that? How can you get revenue when you license a product? Is it because of the distribution? Uh, I believe that maybe is when you uh, when you how do you call that? When you give one mark or one brand to your product, mm -hmm. and you sell that product into the um, into the stores, but you know uh, is when you uh, I don't remember how to distribute. Uh -huh, you distribute, but uh is something like when you have a one son that you want to make your own son and you Frank, give a brand you have to to get a credential Kobe mm -hmm. to the CNR mm -hmm. you need to go to the CNR to to say register that, that product oh yeah that's the word uh you need to to you need to register your own product so that is a way that you get uh, revenue because nobody can copy that. So it's, a, it's like copyright. It is, it is the copyright, um, yeah. which makes, makes it more special then, but I think it, it is tied to, um, tied to, the, to the distribution channel. If you have a brand, it's more, more likely more people will buy your product especially if it is a, a very special uh, brand, you know, if you name it something special. Just with what I said, something came to your mind, right? Something special. Delicious whiskey. But anyways, that's the point. Something... I was about to tell you another oh. song. <laughs> In the way or something by the Beatles? I don't remember, but it's another song. Those are the only two that I get on my mind. Nirvana or the Beatles? I don't know. Something. Ah, anyways. Hey, I hope you like this class. I liked it. I talked too much, I know, but I was so interested on the on the on the topic because making a business grow is very satisfactory, especially if it is someone you know or is your idea is part of it, mm -hmm. you know. It's it's amazing. I hope you experience it sometime if you haven't done it. So tonight, um, I think I stood with who 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 did I stay with last time? I couldn't remember. Oh my god, help me! Who was with me last class? Was it Steve? No, right? Yes, I see. Maybe was Steve. Did. Steve, right? Okay, David, do you have ten minutes for me, or I uh, stayed the previous day. Yes, you stood on on. What was it? What, is, what day is it today? Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes. Yeah, you were with me, with me on Tuesday, so I have next on the line Dora. I'm watching the opening of the games, teacher. <laughs> Dora. Okay, teacher. Cool. Okay. Good night, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. I mean Monday. Sorry. Oh, come on. I'll oh, see you on my... <laughs> You alone? <laughs> yeah, for me, for me, it's Tuesday, teacher, remember. No. For me, today is Tuesday. Days. Daily attendance? No. I'm, I'm doing it right now. Good night. You can disconnect once I said your name. Good night. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Thank you, President. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Good night, teacher. Bye bye. Bye bye. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Thank you. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Present. Good night. Good night. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejia. Present. Good night. Good night. Gracias, Elizabeth Díaz Vázquez, Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar, Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Jarvin was here before. 
José Osmín Rivas Navas. José Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. And congratulations for yesterday. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Juan Miguel Brown Mejía. Luis Albert Steve Bonilla Canales. Present teacher. Have a nice weekend. Same to you. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. And William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Okay. Hello, Dora. Hello, teacher. Just a minute. There we go. Okay. So, vamos a hacer un ejercicio que he estado experimentando con todos, que ha estado dando buenos resultados para encontrar de oportunidad que podamos mejorar juntos, ¿ok? So, oh, they're playing my song, I'm sorry. Are you, in, yeah, you're in San Salvador, I remember. In Sacamil, do you hear the, the cuetes? No. You don't hear them? I can hear them here in Constitución. Mm -hmm. Oh. The noise is at the neighbor. Mm. No, the stadium. Ah, uh, yes. There's a lot of fireworks. Yes. Uh, far away, yes. F fireworks. I can hear you. <laughs> hey, uh, I, 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 I watch the TV. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Okay. So let's see. Let's focus on this for a minute. Okay. So, Rapin, yo le voy a decir una palabra y usted tiene 30 segundos para hablar cuanto pueda sobre esa palabra. Ok. Ok. Do you want an example? No. No. Ok. So if you got the idea, just think about all the possibilities. Ok. For example, if I tell you rocks. Ok. Rocks. 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 One, two, three, go. Rocks. Rocks is a reference to um, uh, <coughs> stone. Mm -hmm. No? Okay. Mm -hmm. A reference to stone and a uh, music. Mm -hmm. uh, and some kinds the rock music I like some kind of music not to like <laughs> <laughs> okay uh -huh. okay good vamos a ver eh, qué áreas de oportunidad podemos identificar dentro de lo que dijimos eh, Primero, a, a este punto, nuestro cerebro trata de identificar de qué me está hablando de rock, con qué relaciona la palabra rock mi cerebro. Lógico, con música lo primero. Muy probablemente se me cruzó por la mente la roca, el actor. Ajá, ah, no, pero también están las rocas, las piedras. Ah, ok, entonces es en referencia a las piedras, un sinónimo, stones. I like it. De hecho, me gustó porque al final... Existe esa relación de, de lenguaje, ¿no? Sinónimos, sinónimos, eso es bueno. Ahora, esto suelo escucharlo mucho de su parte. I'm used to it. I'm used to it. Eh, sería sin el am, solo I use it. I use it, ok. I use it. Ahora, cuando es un objeto, yo digo it. Cuando son varios objetos, digo them. Mm -hmm. Se está hablando en general de las rocas. I use them. I use them. I use them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes rock music. I like it. Oh. Uh -huh. Sometimes I like rock music. You know, necesito el it. Sometimes I like rock music en general, la música rock. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ya agarramos idea. Ahora, let's talk about something else. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Let me think, let me think, let me think. Okay. Easier. Mm -hmm. 
family. Your family. Family. Mm -hmm. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Go. My family is uh, a little, a little family, but it's important for me. Uh, uh, it's a uh, the base emotional, me, emotional is the base in, in the, for feelings. In my family, uh, my my principal family lives in an, another country. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, that's it. Good. My family is a little family. Very good. Is acá me, me perdí un poco en la idea. Mi familia es una pequeña familia. Mm. Showing your for feeling. Ayúdeme, Dora. ¿Qué, qué queríamos decir acá? Es eh, de eh, family is the base is emotional in 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 in, in the life. In, is the in la base de la de las. Oh, okay. Family is the emotional base uh, mm -hmm. in your life. Mm -hmm. Okay, la familia es la base emocional en, en tu vida. Mm -hmm. Okay, hay una cosa que tenemos que trabajar y es cómo calificar los nombres. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Dentro de estas dos palabras, entonces, base sería el nombre. Y sí. el adjetivo que le califica es emotional. Ok. Uh -huh. So, uh, haremos otra oración. If you have a good, uh, no, a strong, a strong um, disciplined emotional base in your life yeah, say if you had mm -hmm. you are for sure an amazing person wait an amazing person okay que pasó mm -hmm. si tu tuviste una base fuerte, disciplinada y emocional ojo con eso en el español yo digo primero el nombre y luego los adjetivos que le califican ah. en inglés es simplemente lo opuesto antes de decir esto voy a decir todo lo que le califica si quiero decir eh, por ejemplo la frase yo tengo un carro rojo Volkswagen de 1978 que iría primero ok bueno, I have a okay. voy a decir todo lo que le califica primero que sería ¿Tú? Eh, red Ajá. a red Volkswagen uh -huh. en 96 1978 1978 car. car car I have a red Volkswagen 1978 car a veces ni siquiera necesito decir que es un carro se sobreentiende en el contexto de la conversación mm -hmm. pero sí sería bueno quizá empezar por ahí atacar eso calificar de la mejor manera un asunto por ejemplo I have a big Antique golden necklace. ¿Sí? Entonces, ¿cómo son las cosas antes de decir el nombre del objeto? Eso es un buen ejercicio para mejorar este aspecto, ¿ok? Ok. <laughs> well, good night. I hope you 
have some rest during the weekend. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye.